In this course, we're going to go over an introduction to informal logic, also known as logical fallacies. But before we get started, I think we need to go over a little bit of background first. We need to go over formal versus informal logic, the use of fallacies, and what the limits of logic are. So, formal logic is mainly used by mathematicians and computer scientists. A mathematician will use formal logic in the form of proof by induction or other proof methods, or truth tables. A computer scientist will use formal logic in the form of if and else if statements. And both of them <clears throat> take some kind of claim and they get down to some other truth that they can also make a claim about through these methods. One thing that both of them use is truth tables. Uh, mathematicians call them truth tables. Computer scientists, they are truth tables, but they are just in a different format. They're in the form of if and else if statements. Informal logic is the use of rhetoric. It's the use of natural language to make a point. And any good argument does have some rules. The rules of a good argument are, uh, first you have to make a claim. If people don't understand what you're trying to say, then you didn't make a good argument. So you do need to make that claim. You also need to support that claim with good reasons. This includes informal logic that does not without fallacies. Even if you're try if you make a true claim but support it with bad logic, it's going to not be a good argument because people are going to see plenty of flaws in it. Next thing you need to do is you need to address counter arguments to that to the point you're trying to make. And you can't just address the easy counter arguments, you also have to address the hard ones. If all you do is address easy counter arguments, anyone observing is going to realize that there are plenty of good points that someone can make <clears throat> opposed to what you're saying, but you're just ignoring those completely. <clears throat> so they would assume that you do not have a good argument against them. Next thing is a good argument, or rules of a good argument are both sides have to agree on some kind of premise. A uh, premise is a statement that's either true or false, and normally it's a pretty simple one. Like, I could say most birds can fly, which would be a good premise to base an argument off of, because most birds can fly, most people would believe that. Uh, almost anyone would agree with that. Now, I could not have a debate with someone who disagrees with my premise, because we we're starting from completely different points, and we're ending up at different points. There's no overlap there. Next thing is arguments cannot be mixed together. A lot of times you'll see this in political debates. One politician will ask another if he agrees or disagrees with something, and it's like a three or four part statement. You can agree with a few of the points and disagree with others. Well, so in the rules of argumentation, you need to articulate each point individually. So that if someone needs to agree or disagree with something, there's not mixed things there. They're not agreeing with parts of it and disagreeing with others. Everything has to be separate. And next is a good argument needs to be easy to understand. If people don't understand the argument you're trying to make, there's really no point in making it. Informal logic, uh, modern day use. A lot of lawyers will use this constantly. It's really their job whenever they're in the courtroom. If they're trying to prove something innocent or guilty, then they would use informal logic. Politicians use this. Uh, professors use this in schools. A lot of people use informal logic. Last thing we need to go over is the use of fallacies. Some are accidental and others are intentional. Uh, Uninformed fanatics can make accidental uh, use of fallacies a lot, and whenever they do, I think it's a good idea to point these out to them. It doesn't even have to be a fanatic. Anyone uninformed can make an accidental logical fallacy, and we'll go over the fallacies in the next videos in this course. It's mainly about those. And the next thing, uh, people can intentionally make logical fallacies. These are normally people with agendas or hard heads. Someone with an agenda would be a politician or a lawyer. They want everyone to agree on a certain point, and 
they'll a lot of them will do whatever they can to make people agree on that. And the next thing are people with hard heads. Even if they realize what they were arguing about is wrong and that they are on the wrong side, a lot of people with hard heads will still keep on making intentional logical fallacies to make some kind of point because they don't want to just give up their side suddenly and be seen as wrong. Alright, so I said the last thing was some... The last slide was the last one. This is actually the last one. I would forgot about this one. Uh, the limits of logic are, unfortunately, morality and politics. Now, I can make a claim that Hitler was a bad guy. And most people would agree with that. But it's a moral claim. There's no logical reason to say that Hitler was a bad guy. Uh, we can agree on the premise that murder is bad. Anyone who commits uh, mass murder is bad, therefore Hitler was the bad guy. But it, the murder is bad premise isn't really logical. It's just, it's a moral thing that most people agree on. So logic cannot be applied to morality. Another thing logic can't be applied to is politics. Because many times, politics is based on morality. For example, a liberal versus a conservative. A conservative would make the claim, uh, someone should not get certain benefits because they didn't work for them. A liberal would say, well, they should get those benefits, they weren't given the chance to work for them. And I don't want to get into that debate, completely different subject, not what I'm here to do. Uh, you can see where both sides, they have different morals, and most politics are based on people's moral code. So, unfortunately, logic can't be applied to morality or politics. In the next few videos, we're going to go over a lot of different logical fallacies and how to recognize those and point those out. Thanks for watching.